The circle, accessible via the plus button or the generator menu at the top, contains many parameters accessible through the generator button available on the layer. The radius parameter, defined in pixels, sets the size of this circle, with the reminder that the diameter represents twice the radius. Depending on this radius value, a bounding box will be defined around this circle, as seen with the transform tool. This is because, by default, the output format is in auto mode. If we switch to unbounded mode, the size of this bounding box, regardless of the radius value, will always be the same. The content of this layer is now considered to be of infinite size, making it impossible to represent a bounding box for this layer. By choosing composition format, the current composition format will determine the width and height of this circle. The custom format mode allows you to define the bounding box of this circle based on four parameters, left, right, top, and bottom. In this case, of course, the radius has no influence. The format preset mode allows you to base the circle size on the list of formats defined in the software preferences. Here again, the radius has no influence on the final result. Let's switch back to auto mode, set the radius to 300 pixels, which is a diameter of 600 pixels. The next parameter determines the color of this circle by clicking on the colored square. It includes the red, green, and blue components, as well as the alpha channel. Indeed, it is possible from the generation of the circle to provide transparency information in this color. It is entirely possible to weight this transparency by the layer's opacity value. Let's set the opacity value back to 1 and take a closer look at the color space parameter. Here, you will find display space and working space options. The display space allows you to specify a color in the color space you are currently using, especially the one used by your screen. By placing the value 0, 05 in the red, green, and blue parameters, we define a visually mid gray in the color space used for displaying your project. If we round these same values in the working space, we define a mathematically mid gray in a linear workflow to which the gamma correction used by the project is added. A value entered in the working space without adding the gamma correction is equivalent to a value entered in the display space with its gamma correction. Depending on the needs, we can define a gray that is visually in the middle or mathematically in the middle. The edge mode will determine how the circle will be drawn. None indicates that we want to fill this circle fully and uniformly. The edge radius mode allows drawing only the outline of the circle. The radius controls the outer edge, and the edge radius controls the inner edge. By displaying a checkerboard in the background, we can see that a hole has been generated in the middle of the circle. Switching to thickness mode allows you to define with a single value the size of the outer and inner radius. The radius value is added to the thickness value here. Therefore, if this value is too small, the hole in the center of the circle will completely disappear. To have a constant ratio between the inner and outer edge radius, we need to switch to radius scale thickness mode. By manipulating the thickness parameter, and then changing the radius parameter, you can see that the thickness of this circle will be constant based on the radius value. Now, let's look at the feather outer and inner size parameters. Feather outer size allows creating a smooth transition on the outside of the circle, while inner size does the same on the inside. By manipulating the radius, you can see that this transition will always be the same size regardless of the radius value which can generate large areas of constant opacity. By switching to radius scale thickness and feather mode, the extent of this progressive transparency will be multiplied by the radius value, both inside and outside. Let's switch these feather parameters back to zero and click on the invert button. Enabling this option now creates a hole using the silhouette of this circle. However, we notice that this layer is now limited by its bounding box defined by the radius of the circle itself. To extend the existence of this circle beyond the bounding box, we need to switch back to unbounded mode. The silhouette of the circle now generates a hole within a layer whose size is infinite. This allows creating a kind of mask or a vignetting effect. Let's switch back to none mode, set the radius for example to 630, and set the color of this circle to black. Now, we can play with the radius and feather parameters to define the look of our vignette. 
import a video into Autographs project panel and place it under the vignette we just created. After fitting the image, we can adjust the radius and feather parameters to fine-tune our vignette. The divisions and shutter angle parameters control the motion blur created by overlaying successive frames. Unlike the motion blur used for the layer, this division's parameter calculates motion blur when the radius or other circle parameters are animated. For example, let's animate this radius with an initial keyframe at 300 and a second keyframe later with a much higher value. Bring the keyframes closer together and increase the number of divisions. Change the color of our circle to a much brighter color to highlight the result of this superposition. Bring the keyframes even closer together. You can see that the number of superimposed circles corresponds to the number of divisions, while the shutter angle determines the temporal distance between each states. Finally, the circle generator also has an offset value to move the center of this circle before applying any transformation to the layer. This allows, for example, to decenter this circle before applying a rotation to the entire layer. The offset will thus move this circle while keeping an anchor point in the center of the layer. The circle generator is a procedural generator, meaning that regardless of its size or orientation, it will always be drawn with maximum quality. By increasing the scale parameter of this layer, you can see that no pixelation effect appears in the image.